so uh, good evening a very warm welcome once again to this longest running webinar i think now in uh, india 57th edition uh, it is my pleasure to be with my senior today dr prasanta roy he is my senior from cip uh, we'll talk about hypnotherapy in clinical practice and with discuss it with cases next slide please Uh, I'd like to hand over the session to Professor Dr. Tofan Pati. He's from Katak, very well known. And sir, since we like to uh, not waste time, I'm, I'm skipping your CV and you can skip ours and go straight to the chairpersons. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Alim. So I can just announce that with us, we have got two dynamic moderators, Dr. Amrit Patujusi. Who is so dynamic that he'll be moderating on board. He's just going to board a flight to Delhi, but he will be with us, I am sure. And Dr. Alim Siddiqui, Nabab to hai. So I welcome both, and I don't want to spare more time. And we'll make us, it will give more scope for Dr. Prashant to hypnotize all the audience. And next slide, please, Pavan. Dr. Anukant Mittal, my old dear friend. This is the encapsulated introduction I can give him in many social pages. But in this formal meeting, he's a professor and head of the Department of Psychiatry of Rajiv Gandhi Medical College, Thane. Years as PG teacher, 20 years of two decades of experience as a PG teacher, awards and honors, inaugural Sarjeji Oration Award, and best research award. Seoul Korea Biological Psychiatry 2010, Best Paper Award in University of Bern, Switzerland 2000, Number of Publications 20, Position Selling Organizations, Academic Dean of FIMC Biomedical Ethics Center, Goregao, Founder President Indian Association of Biological Psychiatry, Current National President Indian Association of Private Psychiatry, Area of Interest Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, Biological Psychiatry, and hypnotherapy. I have seen him when he returned from UK giving lectures in hypnotherapy. And he was quite adopted in that. And any other special achievements, external counselor, United Nations, CISMU from 2016, UNESCO Unit Head of West India, Bioethics Network 2012 to 2021, examined at least 300 plus postgraduates for the Indian Dean. Dr. Mittal has only submitted his CV three in each heading. And if you have completed it, have been two, three, four, five slides. Well, welcome Anukan. Utterly welcome you. And our next slide, please. Our other chairperson is dear, very dear, Dr. Bhavesh Lakrawala, is from Ahmedabad. He's professor in HOD Psychiatry, AMC Amity Medical College, and Set NG General Hospital, Ahmedabad. He is MBBS and MD from Government Medical College, Surat. His achievement, State and Journal National Awards, Dr. R.C. Maniar, Best Paper Award, Dr. Indula Ramasubhari, IAPP Award 2013, Dr. Anil Kumar Dutt, IAPP Award 2013, Oration Award by Psychiatric Department, JJ Group of Hospitals, and Grant Medical College, Mumbai, Pune Psychiatric Association Award 2015, Simati Shatha Award, IAGM 2017 and 18. Executive. Publications in national and international journals 30, presented papers and symposia at state, journal, and national levels 20, active participation in local, state, journal, and national CME and conferences, is reviewer of reputed journal, national, and international journals, examiner and education inspector, NBE, MMC, MCI in Gujarat, other universities and national board of examination and NMC, MCI of India. In IPS is direct council member of IPS 2021 to 24, now is continuing. Convener of ethics subcommittee, Indian Psychiatric Society. Convener of liaison psychiatry section, Indian Psychiatric Society. Convener of specialty section, community psychiatry. Co-chairperson of specialty section, geriatric psychiatry. Executive Committee Member of IPS, West General Branch from 2020 to 15, Chairperson of Mental Health Awareness Subcommittee, IPS, West General Branch 2015 to the left, and Honorary Past State Secretary of IPS, Gujarat State Branch. 
so many accolades, our two chairpersons. I feel it may it is my by privilege to hand over the stage to the chairpersons, Dr. Bhavesh Lakhdawala and Dr. Anukant Mehtar. You stay, please. Uh, yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, Bhavesh, would you like to speak uh, first or would I? Yes, so you start. Okay. Um, today's topic is a unique topic. Uh, it is the most uh, controversial topic because uh, the lay people expect us to know everything about hypnosis. And uh, psychiatrists expect also to know everything about it, but none is taught never demonstrated, uh, never explained. Uh, they read books, uh, they read self-help uh, books and probably do online classes or attend some classes. I've done a two-year diploma in uh, medical diploma in clinical hypnotherapy, not hypnosis. And that is very different from the stage hypnosis and hypnotism that you see. Um, and as Dr. Tafanpati said that we have uh, I have in Chennai, in one of the IAPP conferences, hypnotized 500 psychiatrists uh, sitting in an auditorium at one time. Uh, so what you do in hypnosis uh, is very important. Uh, hypnotherapy is what we as therapists aim to do when we achieve a trance state in hypnosis. Uh, I think we have very eminent speakers today. Uh, speaker today who has been uh, very well trained. I trained at the London College of Clinical Hypnotherapy for two years uh, in that. Uh, so today we have uh, somebody who is equally well trained and is using hypnotherapy as a prominent tool like me in his day-to-day -day practice. Uh, so I hand over some, uh, to Dr. Bhavesh to give a few comments. Yes, sir. You Ravish. rightly mentioned that lay people expect that uh, when we were in the medical school, when we are doing a psychiatry PG and immediately uh, passed out, the lay people were saying that you are reading our mind, isn't it? Can you hypnotize me? Uh, but you rightly said that we are never train for the training of the hypnotherapy, how to do the hypnotherapy, clinical hypnotherapy. And the sir is the right, right person who will throw the light that how he is doing the thing. And it will be useful to the our August audience. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Dr. Prashant Roy. So he's a head of the Department of Clinical Psychology, Institute of Psychiatry, a center of excellence in Kolkata. And he has graduated and post graduation from the MS University of Baroda of the Gujarat. And he did his MPhil from the CIP Rachi and PhD from the Calcutta University and did the special training uh, in clinical and experimental hypnosis and psychosocial disaster care. He's having 38 international and national publications. He's the past president of Indian, Indian Society for Clinical and Exper Experimental Hypnosis and fellow of Indian Association of Clinical Psychologists. He's the editorial in the editorial board member and reviewer in international and national journals and actively involved in community awareness and community-based manpower development. Uh, and disaster field experience as a, at the Gujarat, Uttarakhand, Kashmir, Bihar and Bengal. So uh, we are looking forward for the very uh, important deliberation from Dr. Prashant Kumar Roy. Uh, which will help us in practicing the hypnosis or hypnotherapy 
in the clinical practice so now i invite dr prashant uh, kumar roy to start his presentation thank you sir and uh, i am thankful to uh, the ips uh, odisha state branch uh, for giving me the uh, opportunity to consider me for this uh, session a thursday evening session and uh, the first call i got from dr amrit a uh, few days back and yesterday again dr alim reminded me sir karna hai kuch and today morning i got a call from the veteran uh, dr pati and it was such a nice experience and it indicates the kind of importance that the professionals are giving to the this kind of discussion when uh, so, i wish that this kind of discussion not only about hypnotherapy the thursday uh, the program the webinar uh, should reach to 100 uh, some day and uh, i am also thankful to uh, two gujarati chairpersons <laughs> and i started my <laughs> i started my journey with hypnosis from gujarat baroda only i got the opportunity to learn uh, the first hand uh, experience of hypnosis through dr b m palan uh, uh, who is a medical professional and dr baskar vyas uh, who is also a medical professional and from that my journey started and then i got some opportunity to experiment with hypnosis at cip and thankful to cip for that so without elaboration uh, as i am being uh, told and i am also aware that there is no need to go for the theoretical discussion about uh, the hypnosis uh, most of you uh, are aware about uh, the hypnosis so let me move to uh, the a discussion on as uh, dr mittal was rightly telling uh, that hypnosis is more popular as of a stage phenomena and the veteran milton erickson has rightly mentioned that hypnosis was too powerful of a tool to be left to the entertainers so we need scientific deliberation scientific experimentation and exploration to use this powerful tool as a therapeutic process so what is hypnotherapy there are many myths and misconception about hypnosis and hypnotherapy and many people come to us uh, with the expectation that there is a magic button that magic button by pressing that particular magic button everything will be eradicated so hypnotherapy first of all it is an adjunct technique it is not itself a therapy it is an adjunct technique ideally if you look at the concept of hypnotherapy uh actually uh there is no independent hypnotherapy hypnosis is a process a particular state of trance that dr mittal was mentioning and within this state of trance various therapeutic approaches can be utilized by the psych- psychodynamic approaches cognitive behavioral approaches behavioral approaches neuro linguistic programming so hypnotherapy actually is an adjunctive technique uh, along with other psychotherapeutic modalities along with pharmacological intervens intervention so that we can get the desirable benefit desirable outcome and it utilizes hypnosis to aid in the treatment of specific symptoms or health conditions it works by inducing a hypnotic state that is known as wake full sleepiness or waking awareness <clears throat> that allows people to experience detached external attention and to focus on internal experience there are many theories of hypnosis uh, the, uh, and the, as uh, it was being told that there are many controversies about the theories also uh, one of the most uh, accepted theory is uh, the the socio cognitive school of hypnosis by theodor barber nicolas fanos by those people and according to this theoretical uh, experience it is the detached external attention and focus on the in- inner experience along with the the dissociation so now if you look at a situation or event that can create a demand state for adjustment so that situation or event is known as a stressor 
and whenever you are having a demand for adjustment obviously we will have some reactions and these reactions can be seen in our mind as well as in our body in mind means that it will have reactions in our thought process as well as in our emotion or feelings in body means it would be manifested through our behavior as well as our biological aspect so we are all aware about it so whenever there is any kind of demand for adjustment the body we the, our mind and body will show its reaction so that means it will decide the outcome now when you think about the outcome the outcome can be two one is positive outcome and another is the negative outcome so this negative outcome we uh, when is will lead to the development of illness but when the outcome is positive it will lead to the self development and we know that self development or the positive outcome is known as eustress and the negative aspect is known as distress so whenever we think about any kind of psychological treatment be it cognitive therapy rational and emotive therapy or uh, hypnotherapy or interpersonal therapy so these are nothing but stress management technique these are nothing but stress management technique where our goal is to convert the distress into eustress so that individual can cope up with the situation so so hypnotherapy is also a stress management technique like the other psychotherapeutic processes and as i was mentioning that uh, it is an adjunct therapy many other therapeutic as uh, schools are being incorporated with hypnotherapy so there are various schools of hypnotherapy before i mention some of the the schools some of the scholars even in india uh, they uh, considered that hypnotherapy to be considered as father of all psychotherapy why the reason is the first formal use of uh, hypnotherapy uh, we can see in the history uh, at later part of the 17th century 1700 century during that time the psychoanalysis was not there and because of the the popularity of hypnosis during that time freud himself was interested to learn the concept of hypnosis and he started his learning process later on he deviated uh, from hypnosis so from that point of view uh, some of the scholars are uh, they are trying to advocate that it should be considered as father of all psychotherapy so there is one school and one of the most popular uh, or well known school is the hypnoanalysis or psychodynamic hypnotherapy where the psychoanalytic concept is being used various dynamic methods are being incorporated that tries to understand uh, the the psychopathology of a person in terms of the trauma experience in the past and if we can help the individual to uh nullify the experience of the trauma so that can bring a desirable outcomes and that is known as hypnoanalysis another is cognitive hypnotherapy um aladdin who popularized uh, cognitive hypnotherapy where uh, he could uh, combine some of the cognitive behavior therapeutic technique along with hypnosis and also rational emotive hypnotherapy albert ellis uh, who used to use uh, the hypnotic techniques along with his rational emotive approaches quite frequently behavioral hypnotherapy uh, where uh, even exposure and response prevention other use of reinforcement and conditioning these are frequently used under behavioral hypnotherapy and again some of the hypno hypnotherapies they use more of a direct suggestions uh, to bring desirable changes in the individual and there are some other groups of hypnotherapies like the milton erickson himself and his follower they follow the indirect or metaphorical approach of hypnotherapy to bring the the desirable change in the individual and uh, again uh, the experimental hypnosis is also there this is not hypnotherapy uh, but rather uh, experimental 
understanding of human mentality, human cognizance, and human emotions through various experiments. And, and they, are, they are also trying to explore uh, various controversial issues uh, that are associated with hypnotherapy. And probably all of you are known about past life regressions. So this experimental hypnosis, they have explored uh, what was working behind past life uh, regression beautifully. And Nicholas Panos has uh, written uh, many notes on uh, those experiments. So with this much of theoretical understanding, uh, let me uh, go to our case example. Uh, it is a story of K. So when she came to our hospital, she had received a diagnosis of anorexia nervosa along with severe depressive episode. And she was suffering from anorexia nervosa for last 10 years with multiple hospitalization because of the low hemoglobin level. And uh, they didn't try any mental health uh, professional consultation, but uh, they tried uh, many uh, the indigenous methods to overcome this uh, particular uh, problem. As uh, her uh, younger sister who took admission in MBBS course, she thought probably this might need uh, psychiatric support. Uh, so she uh, brought her along with her mother. And when she came to her OPD, her body weight was 18 kg and her age is 20, 20 years. Her BMI was measured as 7.5. And uh, six uh, during uh, the first time, and at the Department of Psychiatry, uh, she was started with uh, sertraline, and then she was referred for uh, psychotherapy, mm -hmm. and she was completely bedridden, and she even couldn't sit or uh, walk. The mother uh, was holding continuously. So with this, we are also quite apprehensive whether anything is going to work. Uh, and we suggested uh, hospitalization. And I, I can remember that I referred this particular case to CIP for prolonged hospitalization and necessary uh, therapeutic uh, measures. Uh, but they refused to uh, visit there. Uh, and uh, they uh, told that, why don't you try something? Uh, at least if there is no outcome in three or four months, then we can think about going there. So uh, we considered uh, hypnotherapy uh, for this particular uh, case. There are very reasons. I, uh, we don't have time to uh, discuss the uh, reason for that. And we decided weekly sessions uh, with a daily homework assignment. Uh, and we used uh, various techniques. Some of those techniques I'll uh, discuss uh, in the next slide. Uh, but uh, after the starting of hypnotherapeutic session in two weeks, he could sit and stand. Uh, and in four weeks, he could walk and started solid food. And after four weeks, uh, her weight was uh, 20 kg. And uh, we also combined cognitive behavior therapy with this particular girl. And there was no change in certain windows. They refused to visit to the Department of Psychiatry. Uh, and they discontinued certain after are taking for three weeks. After three months of intervention, her weight was 24 kg and BMI was 10.3. So what actual intervention we uh, did with her? Uh, we started with psychoeducation to her mother, uh, herself and uh, younger sister. And I also uh, uh, tried to understand their expectation and we also oriented that the kind of uh, the like recovery, uh, the realistic possibility of the recovery. And we told that we are just trying. We are not very sure uh, whether something is going to be beneficial, but we are trying. And we, as we said, we planned a weekly sessions. They were ready to come. And in the, in the second session, we started with hypnotic induction. There, uh, we used autogenic training method for uh, hypnotic uh, induction after uh, and all the sessions were recorded so this autogenic training hypnotic induction uh, was uh, recorded and that particular recording was given to uh, her sister so that by listening to this particular record uh, she could uh, practice it uh, every day at home 
in the next session uh, we introduce hypnotic ego strengthening hypnotic ego strengthening is basically to uh, improve her uh, the self esteem uh, and there uh, i uh, use uh, the uh, metaphorical method of uh, milton erickson uh, by uh, taking the meaning of the name uh, meaning of the name and uh, is the uh, and we have seen that if you can incorporate the meaning of the name because the person identified with the uh, the name uh, so if you can positively utilize this particular meaning and that can be quite beneficial and we introduced that and again it was recorded and after two sessions with ego strengthening and uh, then we introduced hypnotic guided imagery and future projection uh, about uh, how uh, if in the imagination she used to imagine that i am standing in front of the mirror i am looking at myself and i am feeling good about uh, looking at me that how my body is being changed i am looking more beautiful and people are appreciating me and moreover i am being able to uh, work independently so that is also uh, giving me lot of lots of positive feedback so this kind of guided imagery and future projection was uh, there and she was being projected after 3 months after 5 months uh, how she uh, would be uh, different in the imagination and as i said told that we also introduce cognitive restructuring in terms of what was her goal that she told that i want to be thin so we uh, question whether you want to be thin or you want to be beautiful so whether the thinness and beautiful both are same or there is a difference so if you can focus on how we can be i can be more beautiful how can be i i can be more appealing uh, so uh, that we Uh, incorporated on the cognitive uh, restructuring and the sessions are still um, going on with cognitive restructuring whenever we focus on the food related behavior she shows bit resistance however with hypnotic procedure uh, the improvement is remarkable and the last week uh, her weight uh, is 30 kg uh, tomorrow probably will be seeing her again now her bmi is 12.6 so this is one case example and uh, that i am seeing recently so let me uh, give another example a story of uh, m uh, she is 54 years old lady who is suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder for 25 years and it was vitiligo related contamination and repeated washing she is from uh, gohati and she had been to uh, various psychiatrists and clinical psychologists she had been tried with Uh, SSRIs and uh, also CBT exposure and response prevention, and they went to uh, Mumbai uh, for uh, consultation uh, related to OCD because there was no improvement. And at Mumbai, uh, Dr. Mittal might be knowing Dr. Mirchandani uh, saw her, and he referred uh, this particular case to me for particularly for hypnotherapy because. Uh, it was a failed case using uh, SSRI and CBT. Mm, and when she came for the first time, I found that she had lack of motivation even um, to continue with the pharmacological uh, the treatment because she was expecting doctor sab ab kuch kar dijiye this may kal subhi utke dekho mera bimari chala gaya. She was expecting a kind of uh, magic button. Uh, so uh, whenever the person expresses this kind of expectation that is considered as as a therapeutic resistance uh, to work with so what i did is uh, i planned a twice a week session for uh, two months because she only could stay for two months uh, in kolkata uh, then she had to go to guwahati again and in the first session uh, i used a pendulum uh, like this i used a pendulum like this Uh, to show that how ideo motor signal works how ideo motor signal works and so i showed her so like i'm holding the pendulum and i you just look at the uh, my finger whether i'm moving it at all uh, so i told that see i'm going to imagine that this pendulum is going to move in the anti clockwise direction and just see uh, what is happening uh, Then she told me, "No, it is moving. Hey, but probably you are pulling it. I said, 'I am pulling it. Where am I pulling it? You see, somewhere my finger is 
मूवमेंट दिख रहा है बोले नहीं वो तो नहीं दिख रहा सो आई डिड इट विथ वेरियस मूवमेंट देन आई टोल्ड दैट ओके यू होल्ड इट एंड यू ऑल्सो इमेजिन a particular direction of movement but i don't allow this pendulum to move at all so once she started imagining she also uh, found that after 5 or 6 minutes of imagination her pendulum was actually moving and that was quite surprising to her and with this experiment i explain that see the capacity of mind that we are having so if this mind can uh, move this particular pendulum and uh, which is probably 20 g of 20 or 25 g of weight uh, so the with the use, using this mind we can do lots of thing even we can uh, deal with your uh, the obsessive compulsive disorder and she was quite convinced yeah then i am ready to try she was quite motivated her pharmacological compliance was poor by that time so we worked on that uh, compliance uh, too so that she was uh, regular with the Uh, the medication and explain the importance of medication in this uh, case and after uh, that uh, i started with hypnotic induction in the next, next sessions there the progressive relaxation technique was used using imagery uh, method uh, and that was recorded and she was supposed to practice uh, it, it twice daily at home that was of around 20 minutes uh, duration and in the next ses uh, after two sessions of uh, hypnotic induction we introduce uh, hypnotic uh, ego strengthening again to improve her uh, self efficacy uh, the kind of the negative perception that she is having about herself that i cannot be uh, okay with it and uh, as she was continuing with uh, the ego strengthening uh, process uh, after around uh, seven or eight sessions i introduce hypnotic graded exposure using creative visualization using creative visualizations uh, where i took her into a journey by a train where she was visiting her favorite place and on the way in the imagination uh, she became friendly with a, a lady a co passenger and as as they were discussing lots of a uh, thing uh, gradually uh, after few hours of discussion she identified that and uh, that particular lady had vitiligo on the hand so that particular uh, exposure uh, uh, was uh, introduced uh, using this creative visualization and how she was coping with that particular uh, experience of exposure that was also uh, narrated uh, using uh, suggestions and uh, we continue it uh, with this creative visualizations with graded exposure for number of uh, sessions and again these sessions were recorded so uh, during this process uh, once in a day she used to listen to the eco strengthening recording and the once in a day she used to listen to the exposure recording so that was the technique and uh, later on we also utilize uh, some of the other creative visualizations of mastery and coping with uh, the the problem of the difficulties and once the, the y box score was uh, became uh, less than 6 uh, the y box score came less than 6 as she herself though it was not suggested but she herself went for a behavioral testing where she knew in a religious place in kolkata kalighat temple uh, there was a lady uh, the old lady who uh, had vitiligo all over her uh, body she knew about it and so she did it that she went to uh, meet her and she told that i uh, want you uh, one of the favors from you like aaj main aapko nahlaungi i want to help you in bathing please allow me and the lady uh, actually allowed and that was a kind of flooding and with this flooding she didn't experience any kind of anxiety she was uh, quite happy uh, with the Uh, experience uh, then in the next session she came and told that uh, sir mera bimari chala gaya and i am thankful to you mujhe abhi guwahati jana hai so uh, she was sent to guwahati for a parole for one month and uh, with the instruction that every day you are supposed to listen to this recording after one month you were supposed to come again for one month so that we can have four weekly sessions then we'll call you for booster session 
but she didn't come back. She came back after uh, six months uh, with the symptoms. She reported that uh, for one week I practice everything. Then I got engaged in many other things. मुझे लगा नहीं अभी तो ठीक ही हो गई हूँ इसलिए मैंने प्रैक्टिस नहीं किया तीन चार महीना ठीक थी अभी फिर से बीमारी आ गई हमें दबा भी बंद कर दिया so so this also can happen when the therapeutic process uh, are not completed as suggested by the uh, therapist so uh, with this case examples when to plan hypnosis hypnosis has been found to be inappropriate with person having intellectual disability uh, people who are having neurodevelopmental condition <clears throat> including autism spectrum having a neurological condition like delirium dementia and other cognitive disorders uh, in active phase acute phase of schizophrenia and other psychotic uh, disorders it's contraindicated a uh, severe depressive disorders particularly uh, having psychomotor retardation and, and suicidality bipolar disorders also during the active phase of manic episode it is uh, contraindicated however it is appropriate for stress management uh, in clinical as well as non clinical populations anybody can practice it on regular basis as self hypnosis and we call every hypnosis is self hypnosis it is your efficacy your capacity to be hypnotizable to be suggestible to some extent and though many uh, people they talk about the uh, the mild level moderate level and high level of uh, hypnotizability uh, but the recent uh, research indicates that hypnotherapy uh, the hypnotizability or the depth of uh, hypnosis has minimum thing to do with the outcome of the therapy rather the kind of technique that we are using yeah, that can be important like yeah, the person with, in deep hypnotic state their hypnodynamic techniques can be utilized but at mild to moderate uh, level of hypnosis their cognitive behavioral rational motive uh, factors can be uh, incorporated uh, evidence based meta analysis suggests that in anxiety disorder hypnotherapy is having high efficacy as high as uh, 80% and comparable to other psychotherapy including cognitive therapy in adjustment disorder and other stress related disorders it is appropriate post traumatic disorders also meta analysis says uh, it is uh, quite efficacious uh, in somatoform disorders uh, in sexual dysfunction particularly in the management of uh, the male as well as female psychosexual uh, dysfunction and sleep related disorders in including improvement of uh, insomnia there we it is quite efficacious some of the impulse control disorders including addictive behaviors it can be quite uh, helpful trichotillomania i have used it uh, in tic disorders i have used it quite successfully other psychological factors affect medical condition uh, headache uh, asthma uh, so there it is quite helpful in habit modification uh, like nail biting smoking there also it can be food habit Uh, obesity management there it can be quite helpful lifestyle change so uh, in uh, we have seen that the person who are diabetics who are having uh, high risk for cardiovascular risk uh, so along with the lifestyle modification if we provide those lifestyle modification suggestion uh, under hypnosis uh, that becomes quite effective and motivating for them to continue with those changes and many other medical conditions including infertility ivf uh, ivf treatment for infertility uh, even pain management it is uh, now uh, considered as evidence based uh, practice for many chronic pain management but the important issue is for the beginners uh, who it is easy treatment process is not a very difficult treatment process Uh, but once you are uh, comfortable with a particular psychotherapeutic technique for example if you are comfortable with cognitive behavior therapy for anxiety disorders then only you try hypnotherapy for anxiety disorders because if something is not working something is not uh, going properly then obviously you can always shift to cognitive behavior therapy 
so that the patient doesn't have feel hard so that wisdom that we need to uh, remember so hypnosis is actually not, nothing but a cognitive relaxation a cognitive relaxation and it also involves the four major components of any kind of relaxation exercise we need to maintain a comfortable posture with minimum distraction we need to maintain a passivity of the body unusual body movement to be avoided and passivity of the thought we are not going to think something uh, during this uh, uh, induction phase and if some thoughts are coming we are trying to get rid of them no uh, this kind of activity in the thought process can interfere with the process focused attention is another important issue both for relaxation as well as uh, hypnosis where we need to bring the focus either on the breathing process or on the muscles various parts of the body or maybe some point or maybe the pendulum so the focused attention another important issue or, or, and also focused attention towards the voice of the, the hypnotherapist so that can be quite helpful and awareness about the experience not the evaluation of the experience ha mujhe hypnosis ho raha hai na mera sari se experience ho raha hai ki nahi if you go for this kind of analysis it will interfere with the hypnotic process so awareness of the experience ha without evaluation so that's why initially it takes around 2 to 3 sessions of practice uh, to uh, bring down those resistance so whenever we consider a uh, hypnotherapy for a client we go for a pre hypnosis interview we try to provide the patient with some expectations about hypnotic procedure uh, it is not a magic it is night that aapke haath mein kuch pakda diya jayega aur aap bolo ke nahi ye to mera bachcha hai not those kind of uh, stage phenomena uh, so we assess patient motivations regarding hypnosis that is important why they want to go for hypnosis and we also disabuse uh, misconceptions and uh, they are having we also communicate the uh, reasons for doing a hypnotic procedure why we are going for it how it is going to be helpful so that the motivation is enhanced 10 to 20 minutes of in, uh, interactive process will facilitate the process so there are some hypnotic steps we go for induction induction can follow any of the techniques autogenic training eye fixes and relaxes and induction hand claps a method imagine and focus in muscle relaxes and in a mental room where you imagine that you are going into a mental room where you are feeling relaxed and comfortable arm drop induction or arm levitation induction these are various techniques uh, uh, somebody question that you can discuss about is coin drop induction these are various induction techniques some of the brief induction techniques some of the lindy induction technique but when you are seeing the client for the first or second time we go for lindy induction technique gradually we shift to the uh, the the brief induction technique so that we can have a uh, greater time for uh, therapeutic suggestion depending on the induction that is another important thing that you are going deeper and deeper into the process and you are going into a state of as if you are in a deep state of sleepiness so this kind of deepening suggestion we uh, provide we all then we do the specific hypnotherapeutic work depending on whether cognitive personal emotive or hypnodynamic work we are going to uh, do and in the hypnosis only before we terminate we prepare for the subsequent session we prepare for the subsequent session okay next time onwards whenever you are going to uh, sit on this particular chair you will feel automatically feel more relaxed and comfortable and uh, and if we are having any particular focus for the next session that also we can uh, share uh, so that the client is having better motivation for the session and then we go for termination of the uh, induction by counting 10 to 1 or various techniques are uh, there so that person feels alert uh well oriented about the environment quite aware about what is happening so then we do a post hypnotic interview uh if there is any kind of headache any uncomfortable feeling if something popped up many people might experience catharsis during the hypnotic process uh, so generally in post hypnotic interview we don't deal with the cathartic process uh, but Uh, it, the kind of thing the person is able to remember the kind of things the person is not able to remember so all those things we try to uh, discuss in the post hypnotic interview if any kind of 
query is there from the client that also we address in the post hypnotic interview and we set the agenda for homework yeah so there are various specific therapeutic technique depends on school though for some of the popular therapeutic technique is suggestion where we go for a placebo suggestion or the positive uh, suggestion instead of nocebo suggestion one example of nocebo suggestion is um, as the day passes i am going to find that my headache is going away yeah. okay so person has come, uh, come for headache for pain management so this is a nocebo suggestion negative suggestion keep my headache is going to be less and less so this doesn't work the the placebo suggestion is uh, as you practice this you will find that you are feeling calmness and relaxation in your head so so generally the goal based the focus based uh, it is not that your weight is going to be less you are going to look more smart and beautiful so the whatever the goal is so suggestions to be uh, work on based on the goal what we want what we desire not what we don't want we can use various uh, metaphor as i said like we can use the name of uh, name uh, like my name is prashanto that means serenity or calmness so so that can be utilized in the therapeutic process uh, for a client with the same name uh, to uh, ego st uh, strengthen the ego other metaphor also can be utilized uh, for example you imagine that you are like a cocoon uh, inside the cocoon uh, there is no light uh, but there is some kind of transformation is going on you can understand the transformation happening but what is happening you are not sure about it uh, but the, uh, you can feel the pressure is mounting up and there is a time when uh, you could put make a hole in the uh, in the cocoon and there was a ray of light came you felt energetic uh, yeah, and you started uh, uh, pushing more pressure and then you could come out of that particular cocoon and there was light a full light full rays and you could see that there is entire transformation now you are a butterfly you are flying you are enjoying your life so this metaphor they uh, works on the emotional uh, brain of the individual that can be quite therapeutic ego strengthening as i suggested that day by day you are going to find that you are becoming more confident you are becoming more calm more peaceful more serene so this kind of ego strengthening suggestions those are bit lengthy right? it takes around 10 to 15 minutes of ego strengthening suggestion we also generate idea motor signal uh, to communicate with the uh, the client are you feeling comfortable with this imagination uh, if you are feeling comfortable uh, raise your uh, right index finger if you are not feeling comfortable and you want to come out of this raise your left index finger so in that way we uh, communicate through idea motor uh, signal throughout the uh, the process guided imagery or various visualization techniques sensory techniques are used one popular technique that i use uh, for habit change is that you uh, uh, imagine that you are sitting in front of your uh, television and there are two uh, dvd that you are having on one dvd that now you are playing and you are being able to see that and the, all the habit related problems that you are having we go for detailed narratives and then after watching this now you are uh, taking it out and putting the the next dvd and in the next dvd you are visualizing you can see in the television screen that how the behavior modification has happened and what are the positive outcome of because of the this behavior modification so this kind of guided imagery or sensory techniques are quite helpful imaginal exposure i explained uh, before that that works as a desensitization a rational emotive imagery for example stage phobia so person is imagining that is going into the stage feeling a bit nervous at, uh, and in the imagination the person is taking a few deep breath uh, saying something po uh, positive that i am feeling relaxed and calm and then trying again so these are rational emotive imagery that can be quite used positive reframing of uh, the negative self talk so these are also uh, popular techniques uh, other things every actions or catharsis that also can be generated uh, and particularly people who are having trauma related experience there the every actions can be quite helpful some of the phobia cases also the every actions can be helpful pendulum uh, as i said ki pendulum also can be used sometimes when we are having difficulty making decision 
so there we can uh, use our unconscious mind uh, to make a particular decision using the pendulum empty chair is a gestalt technique uh, particularly in trauma related cases some of the sexual abuse cases i have used empty chair technique where under the hypnotic state uh, they visualize in the empty chair the, the culprit is sitting and they go for a conversation with that particular culprit and that can be quite helpful age regression another popular technique some if there is some uh, past trauma uh, uh, there we take the individual after induction uh, to, uh, to uh, go to that particular trauma phase gradually and uh, and do some therapeutic work uh, there but with all client age regression might not be possible and second thing is during age regression whatever material is coming out that can be the part of the false memory syndrome that can be the part of the false memory syndrome may not be the real indication of uh, trauma but it doesn't matter uh, if we can modify the perception of the individual that can be quite therapeutic future progression i mentioned that imagine in the future that things are going away and ego state therapy where the, for example if the person is having panic attack so we uh, explain that the panic is a state uh, after state of personality that has uh, come into yourself uh, there was a particular time when it entered you so we now there is a different kind of personality of panic we have a conversation with that particular panic state ego state uh, so we create a dissociation. Uh, for example, I'm uh, that Alim has Dr. Alim has come with panic attack, and uh, so I'm telling that okay, uh, Dr. Alim, I would like to talk to your the panic state. Uh, what kind of name you would like to give? Now, for example, Dr. Alim said, okay, I want to give a name a culprit. So okay, dear culprit, uh, I had a conversation uh, with Dr. Alim, and he told that at a particular time you entered him actually to help him uh, so can you tell me when you entered him? Uh, so this kind of dissociation we create that also works as kind of age regression for many uh, people ego state therapy but it has been found to be quite therapeutic uh, if sometimes there is any workshop we can uh, demonstrate uh, some of this uh, phenomena virtually these are not possible past life regression one of the most controversial and past life regression is not the proof of past life. Okay. It is not the post proof of past life, but uh, the, uh, some people who believe that it was the past life issue that was uh, the reason behind the problem. Uh, and by uh, providing some kind of support uh, and meaning related to that can be uh, therapeutic. Hypnoanesthesia is another example for pain management uh, minimize the labor pain uh, this uh, but uh, only the medical uh, personnel are supposed to practice hypnoanesthesia not a clinical psychologist a psychiatrist can do but not a clinical psychologist should practice hypnoanesthesia for the patient and relapse prevention is an important part uh, there we teach effective coping skills we also build awareness about early signs and symptoms uh, and we also motivate them for booster sessions and then we can get a desirable outcome with this now if you are having some time we can go for a demonstration is that fine yeah yeah okay. yes sir absolutely okay uh, so all of you will be my subject except dr mittal <laughs> I'm a bit apprehensive. <laughs> you are it new to new to uh, I will have to work with you to do some ego strengthening and post hypnotic suggestions with you. Uh, sure, but you're sir. not scared of anyone. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have both. Please go ahead. Please go ahead with the demonstration. Yeah. Okay. As I mentioned, I'll go for a uh, progressive relaxation technique for demonstration. Um, only uh, there is nothing to explore, uh, only to teach uh, one of the, the relaxation techniques. 
my suggestion would be uh, not to try to do your own work with some of the crises or the conflict if you are having during this process so that is my suggestion otherwise it has it has no harm anyone can practice it um, during this practice i'll uh, suggest i'll request uh, to close your eyes if any one of you are not comfortable to close your eyes uh, they may be the observer they may be the uh, observer whoever is going to do it uh, make it sure that you are sitting uh, in a comfortable state uh, on a chair uh, preferably with back support if there is no back support uh, my suggestion would be to avoid it or maybe within 10 second of time you can um, uh, take a position where you can get a back support and more preferably if you are having a head support uh, like i'm having head support in this chair so that can be quite helpful if it is not there it's okay but back support uh, should be there so sit comfortably sit comfortably uh, no cross leg uh, keep your feet on the floor in a grounded position and uh, make your cell body bit relaxed and comfortable uh, keep your arm on your lap. Take a slow, deep breath. And release it. Take another slow, deep breath. And release it. And now, allow your eyes to be closed. Allow your eyes to be closed, whichever you want to. And if you are closing eyes and wearing a speck, you can remove your speck. And keep your eyes closed. Just breathe normally, spontaneously, automatically. And as your you are breathing spontaneously, automatically, and normally. Just scan your entire body from the tip of the head to the top of the head to the, the tip of the toes to be aware if at any part there is some amount of tension or tightness. If it is there, just let it go as far as possible. You can modify your posture if you like to, so that you feel a bit more comfortable. If some amount of tension is not going away, it's fine. And now, bring your focus on the right toes and just imagine the right toes are becoming more and more loose just imagine don't try to do anything just imagine that right toes are becoming loose and loose and loose And as they are becoming loose and loose and loose, you might be experiencing a sense of relaxation or maybe a sense of heaviness on the toes. And now gradually shift your focus from the toes to your right foot. Entire right foot. And imagine that your entire right foot is becoming loose and loose and loose. 
and also imagine ki if that is becoming loose maybe it is becoming heavy maybe numb or may not be it doesn't matter whatever the experience is happening spontaneously just be with that nothing is perfect and now gradually move towards your ankle and your cup muscle of your right leg and imagine from the tip of the toes to the right knee each and every part each and every joints each and every muscles including your cup muscle each and every bones are just becoming loose and relax loose and relax loose and relax as they are becoming relax and loose they might be becoming heavy more and more heavy more and more and more and this sense of looseness heaviness and relaxation is passing through your right knee to your thigh muscle and your entire right leg each and every joints each and every muscles are now becoming numb loose relax it would be nice to feel that those muscles are becoming actually loose and relax now shift your focus from the right leg to your left leg to the toes to the left foot and the ankle and imagine these parts are also becoming heavy more and more more and more loose and relax and this sense of heaviness and relaxation is gradually moving towards spreading towards your cup muscle your left cup muscle your knee and your left thai muscle as a result the entire left leg is becoming loose relaxed heavy heavy numb as if they are like a piece of iron rods they might be becoming so heavy so heavy that you may not feel like moving them it feels so comfortable to experience that looseness or heaviness or relaxation and this sense of relaxation is gradually from the legs moving towards your waist your pelvic area and your entire pelvic region is feeling a sense of looseness and relaxation and this particular sensations are moving up towards your belly your lower back and your entire lower back and your abdomen they are also feeling relaxed and comfortable feeling relaxed and comfortable and as those parts are feeling relaxed and comfortable maybe the inner organ like your stomach your liver they are also feeling more relaxed and comfortable 
to function at optimum level. And also, it is gradually moving through your spine towards your upper back. As a result, the entire back, the lower back, the right and left side of the back and the upper back, all are becoming loose or muscles are becoming loose and relaxed. And show the chest muscles are also becoming relaxed. And show the lungs are also becoming more relaxed, they are more rhythmic. And you might be noticing that your breathing is becoming a bit slower, more rhythmic, so that you feel more comfortable and relaxed. And this sense of relaxation through the tip of the toes, passing through the knees, the thigh muscles, waist, through the spine, it's reaching towards your neck. And your neck muscles are becoming loose, They're relaxed and comfortable. They are becoming so loose, so loose and so loose. They might feel like falling at back, if you are having back support. Or maybe you may bend it a bit forward so that you feel more comfortable. If you like. And gradually bring the focus on your right shoulder as well as left shoulder. And feel that how both the shoulders are becoming loose. More and more loose. More and more loose as if some amount of burden is taken off from your shoulders. You feel so comfortable, so relaxed. And this particular sensation of looseness is moving towards your right hand, your left hand. And you might find that you both the hands are becoming heavy and heavy and heavy. They are becoming more and more, more and more, more and more heavy. As they are becoming more and more, more and more heavy and heavy and heavy, a sense of relaxation and calmness, peacefulness is spreading towards each and every part of your body and mind. And so the face muscles are also becoming relaxed. Your cheek your chin, your forehead, all are loose and relaxed. And your eyelids, eyelids are becoming so relaxed and so comfortable. As if you are into deep state of sleepiness, a dream state, feeling so calm, so serene, so peaceful, so relaxed and comfortable. Eyes are so relaxed and comfortable that you might be observing that eyelids are becoming heavy and heavy and heavy. They're becoming so heavy. So heavy. So heavy. They prefer to stay like this as if the upper and lower eyelids are stuck to each other. They're so heavy, so relaxed and so comfortable that as if the upper and lower eyelids are stuck to each other. And if, if you think to open them, they might not allow you to open because they feel more comfortable with this position. You can give it a try. You can give it a try. More you try, more they will be stuck. More you will try, more they will be stuck. And you will feel more heaviness on your eyelids and you'll be more relaxed, more comfortable. And your head is also becoming more relaxed and comfortable. And this sense of relaxation, looseness and comfortableness is now there in your entire body from the top of the head to the 
tip of the toes, from the tip of the toes to the top of the head. You're feeling so relaxed, so comfortable. And I'm thankful that you trusted me, you allowed me, and you showed your motivation to practice it. With this feeling of relaxation, the stay in this position, this relaxed position, comfortable position, enjoy the state of peacefulness and blissfulness and comfortableness. By telling yourself that day by day that I'm going to feel more relaxed and calm as a human being. Just be in this state for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, I'll again start speaking to you in this particular state of As you are experiencing this state of relaxation and peacefulness and blissfulness, it might not be surprising to all the scholars here that you can experience that same amount of relaxation and calmness into a wakeful state, in a non trance state. So this is the time to bring you back to the normal alert state. For that, I'm going to count into one, slowly. As I move towards one, you will find that you are feeling more energetic, more alert, more enthusiastic. And you are becoming more aware about the environment, the position you are sitting, more aware about the discussion. That we had. Then you're feeling lightness on your head. Feel the lightness and freshness. Nine. And so in the forehead and also on the eyelids. Now they are becoming lighter and lighter. And a minor rays of light is probably trying to enter your eyes. Eight. Entire face muscles and the, both the shoulders are becoming light now. You start feeling the freshness. And as the shoulders are becoming lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, and so both the hands are also becoming light. You can move your fingers in both the hands a bit so that you feel more alert and then seven six the the chest the back and the belly all are becoming light five your legs are becoming lighter you have started getting a sense of your legs or and you can move your toes a bit so that you feel more alert more energetic more fresh three you can take a slow deep breath and release it so that you feel the freshness and calmness and relaxation within this alert state to just be aware about the environment. Just be aware about, try to remember the kind of discussion we had. And one, take your time. Don't hurry up. Just allow your eyes to open automatically. Don't force yourself to open the eyes. Just allow your eyes to open with the time. You can take two or three slow deep breaths so that you feel more energetic, more alert, more fresh. You can rub your palm to feel the warm sensation there and you can place on the face so that you can feel that warm sensation so that you feel 
more alert phrase at the same time calm and relaxed once you are done for some of you if you are feeling bit amount of heaviness just wait for a while then you open the eyes but rest of you can open the eyes and we can start if there is anything to discuss thank you sir over to the chair persons bhavesh doctor any comments bhavesh bhai yes sir any yes, comments yes sir i i think dr prashant you can stop sharing the screen yeah i'll stop it yeah <coughs> so it's a very nice session with a, a live clinical experience of progressive muscle relaxation thank you dr prashant and dr prashant has uh, mentioned many important points in the presentation like that hypnosis is not a only treatment modality it is an adjunct technique and it can be used for a specific symptoms and uh, can be used in variety of the conditions like stress management adjustment disorder ptsd sleep dis sleep dis disorders habit modification lifestyle change and lifestyle uh, changes and sexual dysfunction uh, he very well elaborated the various steps like psycho education and uh, how to go about the hypnotherapy uh, hypnotherapeutic stages it should be in the weekly weekly settings in the autogenic settings training uh to use uh, named metaphors to use uh, hypnotic guided imagery and uh, auto progression and re uh, cognitive restructuring it is he said that uh, hypnosis is more like a cognitive relaxation and describe many many stages steps that like induction deepening specific hypnotherapy hypnotherapeutic work specific uh, preparation for the subsequent session should be done in that particular session and how to terminate that session and post hypnotherapeutic interview and uh, for this steps and for this tactics uh, he suggested that there should uh, one can use the pendulum uh, empty chair age regression future prog future progression ego state therapy and uh, hypo anesthesia like that thing so i learned a lot from this session and i think if we can practice in our in our clinical setting uh, such session it can it can be quite useful to the patients apart from giving the only uh, pharmacological medications so thank you very much dr ashinda right ah uh, can i Uh, yes organizers do i have a few minutes yeah 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 sure actually um uh in day in 19 uh 96 uh we started the first nhs clinic in hypnotherapy in maidstone uh we uh, actually advocated that uh, hypnotherapy is a medium of delivery of your therapy just like you have i am iv oral suppository these are mediums pathways of delivery 
hypnosis or hypnotherapy is the medium as dr prashanta said is only the medium through which you deliver your nlp your cbt your rebt or whatever and the more adept you become uh, i think anybody who wishes to practice hypnotherapy should first learn the do's and don'ts and practice inducing a trance deepening a trance keeping a trance deep and in a trance doing dissociation or a double dissociation if necessary addressing the issue at hand helping the patient deal with the issue at hand and then slowly re if they have dissociated them reassociating or merging them bringing them out and then slowly start doing therapeutic work this is necessary because i mean you can add in between uh, ego strengthening and all at the end before you take the patient out or you can also add some post hypnotic suggestions like uh, in uh, obesity management we give them post hypnotic suggestions about uh, what are the kinds of food they would prefer the prime a uh, thing to remember is in hypnotherapy do not use the word you will not or you cannot there are no negatives there's only positive you will prefer vegetarian food you will prefer healthy foods you will prefer you know it is it is that and the second is permissiveness i wonder if you could i wonder if you would i wonder if you can allow yourself i wonder if your unconscious mind would let you feel touch experience you know these are kind of things but very well done excellent job uh, dr prasanth roy uh, i think you are doing a excellent job uh, and uh, we are going to as a command supply to this for 2 hours and the distance covered would be 1350 kilometers right okay no i think the safety we think about is right um one thing only uh, i please don't take it negatively uh, i am the dean as you saw in my introduction of a biomedical ethics and i am also the unesco biomedical ethics uh, chair uh, the first patient you show the photograph she is a young patient she is currently under your treatment hopefully that her bmi will come up she will get married she will have boyfriends whatever you are showing her photographs on the national network though you are showing is, it to it colleagues it is not her photograph sir it is taken from google it is not her photograph it is no but uh, then you should then then <laughs> then you should give yeah. a disclaimer yeah okay, okay. then and you are not whoever photograph it is from google you are not allowed to use it okay, okay let me tell, tell you very clearly now since you are trying to say that it is not her photograph then you are definitely not allowed to use it and you did not give a disclaimer and if it is a patient you have to black and out the face or yeah, the yeah. eyes you have to blur the face. you are right right please remember yeah. this yeah, because right. we we are all facing a very litigious society and anything yeah but otherwise your your choice of words your choice of cases beautifully done very well utilized 90 minutes of time excellent work thank you very much dr krishna yeah very good very good i must thank you and dr tufan pati thank you very much uh, thank you anupam thank you anupam thank you very much uh thank you so much sir for your uh, wise comment mithal sir yes sir i think yeah we should take care of this uh, I, i think the presentation was uh, really very good and uh, the command on the topic that was showing in all of the presentation so uh, there are many uh, questions in the chat box uh, we'll take it up uh, before that uh, i think i think everything has been summarized quite well so nothing more for me to say uh, in fact as the coaches in sports say that uh, there is an induction Alim, phase Alim, and there is Alim. yeah alim since long dr uh, kuldeep pal had been raising hand mm. can you sir let me let sir, sir, sir one oh, minute oh, i am logging out sir i just wanted to ask one question and i am logging out sir so just ask your question tell your question so there's a question so i was in aims one day and there was a mass hypnosis program like like what kashan was doing and in in a crowd of 500 people around 100 got hypnotized 
and, and all the medical students, doctors. So, so and, and we see a lot of this in the religious configuration. So, what is the difference between hypnosis, hypnotherapy, and such religious things that happen? There's a question in the chat back also. So can you yeah. take a question? Yeah, uh, various religious sections are uh, continuously using various uh, hypnotic techniques. And they are having their own processes. Uh, and when uh, hypnosis was not there as a formal uh, method, uh, many of the temples, many of the charts, they used to uh, use uh, many of these techniques uh, to, uh, for every actions. Even there is a common practice in Christianity uh, uh, to uh, call the people to give the blessings and induce hypnosis in them. So they are having high suggestibility and because of the environment, because of the social desirability, uh, they are enacting into uh, those hypnotic roles. The, the same, how you are going to utilize it. So whenever in the medical practice we talk about hypnosis, it, our goal is to uh, teach uh, the self-hypnosis uh, to the individual so that they learn a coping mechanism, a coping technique. Uh, and we can, as Mitra Sarah was telling, we can use this as a platform uh, for various therapeutic techniques so that, for example, in CBT, probably it is going to take 12 or 16 sessions. But when you combine with CBT, probably in four to six sessions, we'll be able to do the work. So it is to minimize the, the overall therapeutic plan. This platform can be used. Uh, otherwise, if you see the, the, uh, the various physiological factors, psychological factors, it is same. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prashant. Yeah. It is, it is very, very similar to the induced trance that you see in the villages, where in the villages, they come and they light a fire in the night and one person will be dancing around the flames and there will be a drum beat and then he will touch one person and that person starts going into an induced trance and starts speaking in a different voice and uh, talking about their problems and they're allowed to do that because it is the Devi which possesses them. It's an induced trance kind of thing. So that's a very common phenomenon in our villages. Uh, well practiced. Right? So we know that. Okay, um, Amrit, before you log out, happy journey. Sir, thank you so much. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Bye, Amrit. Uh, sir, thank you so much. Uh, uh, let me be honest. When we were in the session, in the when we were trying to hypnotize us, uh, what thoughts were going through my mind was how to take care of the 200 plus people that are on board. And then I was trying to anticipate what after toes, the knee is coming, then thigh would be coming. So I was trying to anticipate this thing. And then I have to uh, actually drop out from the session and close my video. So uh, how to uh, cater to these things when a person reports this to you, Dr. Prashant? As I said at the beginning that please do not do any personal work during this time. Uh, just it is a kind of relaxation. Uh, for uh, all relaxation, there is no negative effect most of the time. So for these also, uh, people uh, will not have any kind of negative effect. But what happens as uh, during the termination phase, I was a bit faster. Okay. So some people who are into a deep parasympathetic state, very relaxed state, they might not feel like coming out of that particular state. Now they might would like to stay there maybe for five minutes, 10 minutes more. So for them, what can happen that they might feel a bit of headache. Okay, so that can happen. After coming out of this particular phase, if they are experiencing a headache, if they can close the eyes uh, for a few seconds, take two or three deep breaths, the headache might go away. Or if they don't do anything, uh, after five or 10 minutes, headache will automatically go. Wow for most of the people. So obviously it will not any, have any kind of complications. So there's a question in the chat box. Rima wants to ask, uh, sir, can you please explain the hypnotic induction techniques in a bit more detail? Uh, as I said, like induction, the particular technique that I used, that is known as progressive. Progressive means I brought the focus on various part of the body progressively. And with this imagination, along with the suggestion, the person uh, as putting focus on the suggestions and also imagining or focusing on the particular body parts. So gradually the person feels the particular relaxation experience. So this is progressive relaxation. 
in autogenic relaxation uh, autogenic training what we do is again uh, we ask the individual to uh, focus on the for example both the legs and imagine this particular leg are becoming heavy it is becoming warm so these are various uh, heavy and warm these are common experiences that are being uh, suggested for major body parts in autogenic training in arm levitation and training the individual is sitting comfortably and then individual is suggested that imagine and uh, your your right hand is becoming lighter and lighter and imagine that a balloon is being a gas balloon helium balloon is being tied with your uh, the wrist of the right hand and this particular balloon is um, pulling your hand and you you are, you are finding that your hand is gradually moving up moving up moving up so this is another induction technique that is hand levitation technique or the coin drop i uh, imagine that you are holding uh, a coin on your palm and just imagine that particular coin is growing inside it is becoming heavier and heavier and heavier and it is uh, pushing your hand towards uh, the uh, ground so we see that uh, gradually uh, the the hand start uh, like going down that is uh, the arm heaviness suggestion so these are various kind of suggestion that uh, we uh, use uh, depending upon our choice our expertise and uh, the patient's uh, comfort zone i fixes and technique just imagine just uh, you bring the focus on a imaginary point or a real point on the ceiling and just look at it uh, and uh, imagine that your eyes are becoming heavy and heavy whenever it close automatically you will go into a deep hypnotic state so these are various induction suggestions that are generally used sir is it that you are trying to disengage a person from the from the emotional turmoil he is in yeah he or she is in and yeah. then look at it uh, look at it from yeah. a different perspective, perspective and then reintegrate the thing yeah the the focusing of attention is one part second is dissociation getting disconnected from the external causes the noises so these are two uh, important aspect that we follow and whenever we give suggestions uh, we go for a conditioning in the suggestion i am repeating the same phrase you are going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper so during this conditioning phase once individual listens the same thing repeatedly start enacting or believing the same thing so that works as a suggestion sir how effective would be hypnosis if you try on 100 people uh, how if in in what percentage would you 90%, find it effective? 90% around 90% okay. around 90% but again the hypnotizability will be different uh, if you consider the deep hypnosis a very deep uh, high depth of hypnosis probably around uh, 15 to 20 percent or maximum uh, 20 percent of the people will be at that state but most of the people will be at mild to moderate level of depth 70 percent will be at mild to moderate level of depth and can you forcefully hypnotize there is a question in the chat box i think you have already answered no no and can someone do this no we cannot do this and this is always self-hypnosis if i want to and if i'm being asked that during hypnosis that you undress no that is not never going to be possible uh, i am i am having all the control you know, during hypnosis if anything unethical not permissible by my morality if anything is suggested i am not going to follow that immediately so i get up and leave this lap to the okay. so this is a myth this is a myth that yeah, people have that anyone can hypnotize anyone this is a myth. Okay, so many questions on where to learn hypnotherapy and some people are uh, wanting your contact details. Yeah, the, I've seen some questions about the neurobiological research. Yeah, there are many neurobiological research, even uh, Dr. C.R. Mukundan from Nimans, he has done many research on that. Those papers are available. Kindly go through uh, it. Uh, about the, uh, the courses, there are two uh, PG diploma courses are going on again in Gujarat. One is at MS University. Uh, it is of uh, nine months duration, PG diploma uh, course uh, as uh, evening course that is going on there. Another course uh, by Charusat University at Anand. Charusat University, they have started a distance course. Distance course, uh, PG diploma course in uh, clinical and experimental uh, hypnosis. 
in this distance course uh, there are six contact sessions six contact sessions or training sessions including examination but most of the things are uh, part of uh, the virtual teaching and most of the things have been video recorded and i am one of the faculty dr rakesh zain is also here today he is also under faculty uh, so there are many people uh, dr vm palan from badodara uh, he is the uh, like the founder of that course so these are two university recognized courses that are running now and uh, there are various other organizations they uh, provide uh, some short term courses like your dose has started providing some short term courses basic level intermediate level and we are coming with an organization also national academy of hypnosis and little sir we need you uh, for uh, that and but if you have any any brochures we'll host it on our facebook page so that people can access you there uh, okay that is a diploma course at charuset university they have recently announced uh, that they are going to start the next sessions so i'll send you the brochure yeah so any any links any brochures that you have we'll host it on our facebook yeah. page so that people can access it on our facebook page that will so there is a question in the chat box uh, uh, kalyani wants to ask that she was uh, she had undergone hypnotherapy and uh, she was unable to visualize anything apart from light is it normal yeah as i said no there is various depth of individual and Absolutely. all people are not visually no. oriented Absolutely. all people are not visually oriented okay so there are some people who are more auditory oriented there are some people who are more kinesthetic there are some people who are more visually oriented so initially before you going for guided imagery we give some kind of visual experiment for example imagine that you are holding a, a rose and now tell me uh, uh, what is the color of the rose how many petals are there if the person is being able to create that visualization then only probably will take that particular individual for visual imagery otherwise we'll go for some other suggestion based maybe cognitive uh, therapeutic approaches so depending upon the client we need to customize what kind of particular therapeutic process can be helpful absolutely so what are the flip sides of hypnosis negative side effect negative effects uh, as i uh, shared that for suicidal client it can be dangerous uh, even people having suicidal potentiality if they uh try we have also witnessed if they try some of them reach to some of the hypnotherapy workshop uh, to uh, do their self healing by learning it there is a magic button my problem would be solved and some people after attending some workshops uh, have attempted suicide or committed uh, attempted yeah committed suicide so that is one dangerous side of it and again severe depression with psychomotor retardation they are already in the psychomotor retardation phase with hypnosis i am going to bring that particular individual into more parasympathetic mode but that particular individual needs activation not the um, like lowering of activation so it can be problematic even a psychotic client yeah for psychotic clients when the person is stable under medication hypnotherapy can be used for improvement of the quality of uh, life by expert persons under supervision however with psychosis if you are using it and uh, to deal with the psychosis it can have a very catastrophic reactions so these are some of the contraindication mithul sir would you like to add anything uh a couple of things about psychosis i would say leave it to the really 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 expert people uh you should first as i mentioned learn how to take the patient in and out and probably learn also how to deal with distress that occurs intra and post session very often you do not take a patient to a memory which has been very distressing and which has been suppressed and repressed and confront them with it and then bring them out without resolving the distress because once they become conscious the distress remains and they may commit suicide because the memory remains the memory that they have suppressed in childhood of child abuse or whatever you allowed to come it to come out and you're not allowed them to deal with it right the reason they repressed it because they were not able to cope with it now you bring it out and they can't in present cope with it so they get distressed and they attempt things like suicide that is very important so uh see in some cases of ptsd okay we have to be very careful to use no no ptsd is yeah. different i'm talking of other adverse uh, life 
events yeah life events which have been suppressed and repressed and uh, also uh, very important to remember is that uh, you may learn from uh, people but you have to first keep on practicing the therapeutic sessions uh, in terms of process learn the process properly before you start dealing with patients and actually doing therapeutic work in a trance there is a big difference between that i have done a two year diploma where the first one year we learned about different kinds of trances and different you know manners of taking people in and out of trances and everything and then we started working with clients you know so that becomes very important uh somebody mentioned something about psychosis i would say please 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 leave it leave it totally to the to the experts uh as it is you are not going to get more than one or two patients that you can deal with i i honestly would like to ask you how many of you practicing in private or otherwise would spend one hour with a patient on a regular basis i see only six patients maximum eight patients in a day i don't know how many patients you people see and how many of you would get an hour to spend with a patient and probably if there is some distress spend another half an hour with the patient so be very careful about the amount of time you give to patients and that becomes very important right okay but uh, as i said uh, uh, prasanta has given a very good uh, very good demonstration of how to handle depression one part i think you forgot was uh, automatic writing yeah uh, that we, i that uh, i didn't yeah. mention yeah we we do a lot of that with uh, unfinished business in uh, bereavement where people have been suddenly bereaved especially now in covid where people have suddenly died and their relatives are left with uh, not being able to say goodbye so we put them in a trance and make them do a lot of automatic writing where they are able to write a lot of their feelings and say goodbyes etc uh in terms of that and that helps a lot yeah okay okay thank you thank you yeah. and we suggest uh, from our organization we always suggest like uh, once you have practice hypnosis for 400 hours under supervision then only you go for independent practice of hypnosis yeah true true that is one Absolutely. thing and another side effect we have seen with some of the dissociative disorder patient during hypnosis uh, they also might throw dissociation Yeah, yeah. So it can increase the frequency of their dissociative attack. So that's that is another you, problem. You should be ready to deal with that when they yeah. dissociate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tofan sir, your comments, please. Anyone else to comment? Dr. Kuldeep Kaul has been. I think uh, yeah. I am trying to search for me. He uh, he is not there in the audience. And, uh, I think check out. Check out. Yes. So it has been a very nice session, and I do believe that we will have to further it. and we have got dr nukant mittal and we can make it in a more demonstrative way and we can invite dr prashant ray dr nukant mittal both can be our faculties if i am going to i if i am going to iipp guwahati in person yeah. Yeah. and probably we'll do what we did in iipp chennai we'll do a mass session in a hall for all the psychiatrists and work through ego strengthening or something for them a one hour session probably we can do that In spite of that, we will invite you to Thursday meet. Yeah, no. I <laughs> and I know you won't be able to deny. Yeah. And uh, I thank everyone who had a very good attendance. I, I had seen O.P. Singh over here. He is no more there. He has left. And yeah, I think sir, we over short time a bit. Ah uh, yes, we have over short time. Therefore, I am not been just to one question. This uh, the faith healer healing persons. So, this is a type of uh, let us summarize uh, understand the process in this way. The person is in a relaxed state, and we give a suggestion. He responds to the suggestion. A very non non-interpreted, and this is the thing what happens when the person uh, is having some problem, some dissociative state, and the faith healer cures. and that faith healer curing are also facts the dynamics nobody knows even that extremist uh, extreme shouting all these things are the therapeutic impact the person comes out 
divide of the symptoms. What is the dynamics? Sir, what person can doctor no can? No, I didn't get the question. Uh, uh, there is a patient who is having a dissociative disorder, and he is taken to a faith healer. Right. Faith healer thrashes right. him, thrashes right. her, and uh, asks her to carry a um, bucket between her teeth. Somehow he does it, and by the time he comes back, he comes around. This is reported, and we, I do not want to ignore such reports. So, is it that it is just a kind of strong suggestion to the vulnerable people who respond to them? Um, I, I, I don't know uh, because I can't. I don't know what happened, but the nature of the dissociation. But uh, yeah, a lot of dissociative states uh, do allow people to do tasks which we normally believe are beyond human endurance uh, because the body does have that strength, especially, you know, that under hypnosis, they make you stiff as a board and they make you, you know, uh, stand, uh, they make you vertical, uh, they make you horizontal on one particular stick or something. All those kind of things are are real. Uh, you can, as you said, if you can induce hypotonia, you can also induce hypertonia. Right. But uh, but as I said, the point here is uh, how much of it is therapeutically oriented and how much of it is show is, is the question in hand. Uh, if he wishes to dissociate the person and do a task to focus his uh, uh, what you call complex uh, conflicts and uh, distract himself and dissociate himself from them, he could always choose a task which is not so dramatic or not so taxing in either ways. Uh, so I, I can't I can't actually comment on what the patient was or what the process was. Right? So yes, many a times they use the dissociation component of an individual. Yeah. And because of the particular environment and those uh, in hard folk situation uh, the faith healing situation, the kind of environment they create, uh, those are ideal to uh, invoke the suggestibility of the individual. And they do a lot of rituals as a preparation uh, so that the person into the dissociation phase. And they utilize that particular dissociative experience along with punishment. Along with punishment, they use a lot of aversive techniques. Uh, so, so those aversive techniques are helpful. Uh, but again, the ethical issues related to it uh, that Absolutely. we need to consider. We cannot consider uh, those as a treatment. That, that's true, we cannot consider, but these things take place. At least we can understand that maybe this was a uh, yeah. rapid yeah. process. Process, process the same process they are using many a times. Because they aren't asked our uh, permission, the persons who do it, they faith it as they are not technically uh, qualified, medically qualified. They don't understand. They're following something that some guru has trained them. Yeah, yeah. And people believe in them and people are going to them and will keep on going to them for some years at least. Hmm. Okay, your presentation has been nice and contribution by Dr. Bhavesh, Dr. Wala and Dr. Nukant Metal has been enormous and the attendance was very good. I thank everybody. Thank you. And, thank you. And I uh, thank and thank you. the Trust and Using Team. I thank and the of Indian Psychiatric Society with the State Bench. I thank all the participants. I thank both the moderators, one is flying now, and I thank Karen for the support, unhindered support. Thank you. Everybody. Good night and keep safe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure thank, being with you all. Very thankful to the Society, Dr. Tufan Pati, sir, Hello. Dr. Alim, Dr. Amrit, thank you. And very nice presentation, Dr. Prasad. Okay, bye. Good night then. Good night, boss. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, with your permission, we can close the meeting now. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Pavan. Please yes, sir. I, I'll close it, sir. Yeah.